Coming to you from Pennsylvania Leadership Charter School Studio B in Westchester, Pennsylvania, it's the November 10th edition of The Portal. Today's special guest is a University Scholars math teacher who has an affinity for infinity, Ms. Mulraney. And now, here's your host, Mr. Graham Osborne. Hello and welcome to The Portal, your place for PALC's announcements and interviews with PALC's teachers. I'm Mr. Osborne. Parents, parent-teacher conferences will be held on November 10th and 11th. Parent-teacher conferences are an important opportunity to discuss your child's progress at PALC's. Also for parents, there are several virtual parent webinars coming up, November 12th, 13th, 17th, and 20th. Check the announcements for a listing of the topics covered. The submissions for the Anti-Bullying Music Video Contest are in, so check them out and vote for your favorite. Voting ends Thursday, November 13th. The French Honor Society is hosting an evening of French treats, a short movie, and video clips in the Southeast region on Tuesday, November 11th. The evening is open to students and their families who are taking French and anyone who is interested in French culture. Book Buddies is happening in both the Westchester and Pittsburgh offices November 14th from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. Students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade are invited to join the elementary teachers for a time of stories and activities. We also have an on-site middle school event on the 14th in both the Southeast and Southwest buildings. For more information, check out the links on the Moodle homepage. Our guest today is Miss Mulrainen. Please welcome Miss Mulrainen. Yeah. Thank you for having us, Roswell. Thanks for coming in today. So, how long have you been at PALX? This is actually my fifth year teaching at PALX. Fifth year, all right, very mm -hmm. good. What do you teach? I teach in the University Scholars Program, mm. and I teach math for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. I teach pre-algebra and honors algebra one. All right, wow, well, that's, that's way over my head. I can't, <laughs> I can't handle it. What do you love about teaching math? Uh, I've always liked math ever since I was in grade school, but what I really like about teaching math is that the creative problem solving process that these students dive into is really something that's inspiring to me as a teacher. So I really don't stop when I just get an answer. It's more of asking them other questions like, could we get this another way? Or is there another question we could ask? Even something that wasn't even posed in the problem. But it's all about really getting the students involved in the problem, not necessarily the math content. The students are actually solving problems they can use in real life. Wow, that sounds intense. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. So what kinds of activities do you do in those classes? Um, one of my favorites is what I was just discussing, which is asking students more questions. Sometimes I'll just put information up on the board and there won't be a question. Hmm. And the kids will say like, oh, well, how long would it take us to purchase something like that? Or what if we bought something that was more expensive? So they are the ones that actually are asking the questions, which is a real role reversal. Um, and I actually have jumped on this from my grad work. Um, I take a graduate studies and I use that type of mentality to have the students as kind of like part of the community in terms of the learning community. That's great. Um, so they really enjoy that and I think they actually like answering their own questions, not the ones that I ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Okay, that's really cool. I hear you did a really interesting project recently about texting and driving. What can you tell us about that? Sure, the um, Algebra 1 students were, talk were learning about unit rates and what I had them do is I had them bring in their cell phones to class which I know is, I know, we get, our eyes get really wide as teachers. <laughs> um, but I had them bring their cell phones into class and I had them, I posed some questions on the board and I said, using your one hand, they only had to use one hand, they had to text and we had students with stopwatches who were seeing how long it took to type a text message back. Mm. Based on that rate, the average rate was about between 13 and 14 seconds for an average text back. And I said, okay, now what kind of questions can you ask on the road? And they were like, well, you know, how long would that, you know, if you're texting, how long is 14 seconds? So then mm. we looked at some residential and highway mileage and looked at how much time passes and how much you're driving in that 13 or 14 seconds. The results were really shocking. So after we went through all of the math about it, all the stats, all, this, um, all of that information, the students then took a um, more active role in doing an advocacy 
advocacy campaign. So they either did PowerPoint presentations, they did posters. Mm. Um, we had one student who was selling thumb bands that said texting kills, so when you're driving you can see the thumb band. Uh. Um, they did songs, one student did a rap. Um, they did all of these different things and then had it posted all around the school and on the USP Parent Student Center so that the USP community can be more aware of this issue by what they did with their mathematical work. Well that's really great. I mean that's that's a great way of bringing it into the real world mm -hmm. and a, a big big issue today. Yes. Definitely. Great. All right, this is uh, time for three questions now. <laughs> what is your favorite mathematical symbol? Oh, this one's easy. I love the infinity sign. I love the fact that no matter how many times you draw it, you'll never have to pick up your pencil. Nice. <laughs> That's very representational of infinity itself. Yes, when it is. is the last time that you used math in real life? Okay, so my best friend is starting up a business in New York City, and she wants to like start with this flower truck business. So she sent me her business plan. She said, can you just look over it and make sure everything's okay? And I said, well, have you figured out how many you would need to sell in order to make a profit? And she's like, I really don't know how I would find that out. Well, we would bring into it inequalities. Ah. So we set up an inequality and figured out how much she would need to sell and how long it would take her to reach a, to make a profit. They then had the pre-algebra students do that own project with a business they created. And mm. they had to figure out how long it would take them to make a profit. So I actually based it off of a project that I did. Who knew that numbers were relevant in the financial world? <laughs> Last question, who is your favorite Disney princess? Oh, I love Belle. Not only is she brilliant, but she's also beautiful. Do you see the resemblance? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, uh, last thing we have is our typing challenge, which you took earlier, and uh, we want to take a look at how you did on that. If you've not seen our typing challenge before, we give our teachers a, uh, a phrase to type out, and we change the keyboard around a little on them so that it's a little bit more difficult. So you had 60 seconds to type out this phrase. Let's, uh, let's take a look how you did. What was going through your head during that part right there? So I was trying to find, I was obviously trying to find the keys, but then I started realizing like once I had the O or once I had the E, I was able to go back to it really easily. Mm -hmm. But then the new letters, especially that Q, the Q was just driving me nuts because I couldn't find it. That's the first time I had to use it. Yeah. So that was just, oh, that was very three, two, and that's time. So we totaled up your score based on how many letters and spaces you got right. I uh, didn't get any wrong, which is always good. <laughs> and you got a 37, 37, which puts you in fourth place, but still a respectable, a respectable <laughs> number there. Well, uh, Ms. Moran, thanks for coming in today. We really appreciate it, and uh, good luck to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure you. being here. And thank you for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.